My name is Daniel Helden. I'm a uh, uh, PhD student at the Karolinski Institute and been working with uh, DICE and with uh, Karin uh, for uh, a year or so, uh, part time with this work. Uh, and um, as Alex uh, correctly noted, we've already presented once, I think it was on the 11th of January, uh, some of the preliminary work, uh, but we wanted to extend the work and include more applications and more funding information. So uh, we continued the work and that's the additional analysis or analysis with more focus on, on funding of the digital aspects is it's, it's what's uh, been the focus during this, during this spring. So I will take you through uh, some of the uh, uh, slides that we have, some of the results and uh, um, some points uh, for of in, points to, to consider. And uh, then uh, if you have questions and comments, then that will be uh, more than welcome. So, so once again, this is analysis of the digital aspects within the proposals uh, approved for COVID-19 vaccine development. And these are the uh, proposals to UNICEF, Gavi, the Global Fund and the World Bank. Um, overview, and I've already told you most of this, so I'll just briefly go through the background. Most of you are, of course, not knowledgeable about this. Uh, the purpose of the review, a uh, short uh, um, thing about the methodology, uh, focus on the overall results, some examples and, and implications and considerations, essentially. So background, as you probably know, um, um, Gavi and UNICEF funds are provided on the COVID-19 vaccine delivery support funding envelope, and is designed to enable rapid rollout and scale up of COVAX funded vaccine doses. In uh, uh, April 2021, uh, DICE, Digital Health Center of Excellence, were, were launched to uh, support these careful choose and digital solutions. And of course, as you already know, DICE responds to countries' different requests and try to help them in various ways. And the purpose of this review is to understand if and how digital aspects have been included in the COVID funding request for vaccine deployment uh, for UNICEF, Gavi, Global Fund and World Bank. Specifically, what types of digital aspects are they planning to develop or implement? And we had a very simple method methodology. So uh, all publicly available uh, documents until uh, 1st of May 2022. And these included the early access and needs based CDS applications for Gavi and UNICEF. And the Global Fund COVID-19 um, uh, uh, applications as well as the World Bank COVID-19 response additional uh, funding uh, applications. All of these documents were included in the review um, and the data abstraction was also quite simple. So each document was searched by a list of keywords representing various potential digital aspects and then the data were abstracted based on NDVP pillars essentially. And we tried to include as much uh, uh, information as possible regarding the funding amount, especially during this second uh, uh, analysis uh, during the spring. Uh, moving swiftly to the results, uh, in total, uh, we included or reviewed 311 applications from 120 countries. Most of these countries uh, was uh, from Sub-Saharan Africa, but also quite uh, many countries from Latin America and the Caribbean, as well as Europe and Central Asia, East Asia and the Pacific regions. As you uh, can also see, um, there were most applications coming uh, to Global Fund or review that were uh, designated for Global Fund, but also uh, many from Gavi, of course, World Bank and, and UNICEF. And of the 311 applications, 39 did not include a digital aspect and 272, 88, around 88% of the applications included at least one digital aspect. So the large majority actually included some type of digital aspect. We identified 707 digital aspects. Uh, 618, we were able to find funding linked to the digital aspects. Uh, 89 uh, did not have funding linked to it or we could not find explicit or implicit uh, funding linked to it. And those 89 digital aspects were primarily coming from World Bank, uh, but also some from um, the Gavi uh, Needs-Based Windows applications. 
a bit more about the funding. Uh, so uh, overall, all applications had a significant amount of funding directed towards the activities uh, and digital aspects. For UNICEF, um, the total amount in the um, um, in the applications were 38 million US dollars. Of those, a maximum of 9 million or around 23% were towards activities that included digital aspects. And for each individual digital aspect, the median uh, percentage of investment was around 11, 11%. For Gavi, it was uh, the applications amounted to 647 million US dollars, and the and maximum towards digital aspects was 122 million, uh, represented roughly 19%. And for the individual uh, digital aspects, for it was around 6%. Moving to Global Fund, they, uh, we included, or the applications included quite a lot more funding, of course. Uh, so 2,301 million US dollars in the applications we reviewed, and of those around 12%, 12, 12 so 286 million uh, were dedicated to, to activities that included digital aspects. And the median of investment predicted aspects um, out of the total application funding were around 2%. And for World Bank, um, it was a total amount of funding for 5,916 million US dollars. Around 14% of that were towards activities that include digital aspects. A median uh, investment per digital aspect out of the total application funding was 7%. And I want to emphasize that this, um, these numbers are, are very, uh, they are in the upper range. So these are definitely the maximum amount that we could that we could link. So, and the and the so to say the certainness of the funding amounts um, is higher uh, in the UNICEF applications and Gavi applications because they had a much clearer linkage between the activities and the um, budget templates or the budgets. While it was not as easy to find uh, in Global Fund or World Bank. Um, so if, uh, for instance, there were uh, one digital activity that were, uh, that were, that were uh, a bundle of different activities that were funded together, um, that funding amount was what we extracted. So these uh, numbers are definitely the maximum, uh, uh, maximum funding uh, dedicated to the digital activities. Uh, so that's good to keep in mind. Moving on to the uh, moving on to the um, uh, description of the of the digital aspects as such, uh, we saw that the majority of digital aspects concerned immunization monitoring systems. Um, quite a lot of digital aspects um, were considering different for different digital aspects when it came to vaccine acceptance and uptake. Uh, but also COVID-19 surveillance and uh, uh, vaccine safety. There were also some data aspects with regards to supply chain and um, overall planning. If we, sorry, if we break down this uh, per region, we see that there seems to be a similar distribution of data aspects in the NDVP categories across regions. Also for this new analysis, uh, of course, uh, most applications came from Sub-Saharan Africa, so uh, that's why um, that's the majority in most of the NWP pillars. So this is, um, this, we saw essentially a very similar distribution across regions. Uh, when it came to the, uh, when it came to breaking down these numbers in terms of uh, funders, we saw that the UNICEF applications were focused on NDVP 2, 7, 8, 9, and 10, while GAVI applications were more focused on NDVP category 8, 9, and 10. Global Fund and World Bank applications included many digital aspects in NDVP category 6, 8, 10, and 11. And overall, um, when we looked at this broader picture, me, Karen, uh, we thought that it might not be so surprising uh, given the different focus of the donors that we see this uh, uh, distribution of um, digital aspects uh, with regards to the different donors, essentially. 
And just to give you a bit of a, a flavor of some of the examples, you might have already seen this before, but uh, so for instance, for Angola and the uh, Gavi early access window, they talked about uh, they wanted to um, create or develop a digital vaccination registry in the global fund application. They talked about the DHS platform that they wanted to develop further. And in the World Bank additional financing, um, they included a digital aspect such as uh, social media listening and rumor management. And when it came to Mongolia, um, the, in the UNICEF early access uh, window application, they had a quite large uh, portion on GIS in for micro planning. In the global fund um, application, they talked about multi-source surveillance data platform. And in the World Bank additional financing, um, they mentioned um, surveys using innovative technology, some public knowledge, and so on. So quite a, a, a broad, um, a broad um, selection of different digital aspects, uh, but uh, information systems uh, in, in the majority of the parts. When it come, came to Nepal, uh, once again for the Gavi uh, early access uh, window, it had uh, some digital aspects when it came to micro planning, global fund application, they wanted to strengthen and scale up of the M supplies so or supply chains um in the digital aspects of those and in world bank they wanted to d support a, a framework for digital technology-based information systems el salvador had was one of the um had one of the applications that did not ex uh, had an explicit digital aspect for the unicef early window for global within the global fund application they discussed the uh, the the full implementation of a single health information system and in the world bank uh, additional financing they um, discussed some some things about the registration system uh, making that uh, digital and web based so once again this is just a flavor of uh, what we found in in the data and uh, uh, some uh, there are some important uh, limitations of the review, as you might already have, have thought about. Um, especially the global fund and World Bank applications lacked uh, detailed descriptions of digital or potentially digital aspects in many instances, uh, even though they might be implied by the planned activities. And uh, as I already mentioned, funding numbers were often not directly or clearly linked to a specific legal aspect. So you should really take these numbers with, with, with caution. And of course, the most tricky part is that uh, it is not um, very clearly stated in the application what has already been implemented, what is planned to be implemented and how and if it's not already functioning. So the timeline of the different uh, digital aspects is very, uh, is very, hard, to, is very hard to assess. Uh, we have made the full data sheet um, and further details of methodology uh, available. Uh, I think Karen has, has uploaded it to, to, uh, to a link that's shareable. And all the proposals were, of course, uh, taken from publicly available sources or the partners platform when it came to UNICEF and the Gavi uh, funding applications. So uh, when uh, to, to summarize a bit and thinking about the implication and some points to, to perhaps start the discussion or questions, um, when, when me and Karen uh, have tried to summarize and think about these, these findings, uh, we we have we are uh, curious or we are wondering um, how we might actually define the digital investments and if it's necessary to have a, a better definition of digital aspects and of course um, how are they utilized and tracked across different countries and donors what are the mechanisms or is it necessary to have to have some kind of new mechanism and in that same sense, would it be possible to coordinate investments for digital aspects across donor agencies? And uh, something that also um, was came up was that um, it's not certain in these proposals how these digital investments are supporting the health system 
and the health information system more broadly beyond the COVID-19 vaccine deployment. So how are we making sure that these uh, investments um, support the uh, country health system and not only focuses on the COVID-19 vaccine deployment? So those were just uh, a couple of uh, thoughts uh, we had when we looked at the uh, data and we uh, um, looked at the overall picture. Uh, I will end it here, uh, but I, I am gladly uh, taking questions and looking forward to a discussion. So uh, thank you. I guess that was everything for me. So I will hand it over to you, uh, Alex.